Salut amis du Voix comme toujours je suis ravie d'être avec vous. Et bien dans le cadre de votre émission favori Yesterday Show, aujourd'hui nous allons donc nous tourner sur un aspect bien précis. Et bien que deviennent nos enfants à l'étranger Ces jeunes Africains qui sont obligés donc de faire la différence dans un monde où l'excellence est prônée. Et bien aujourd'hui je reçois avec moi ici un jeune homme de la diaspora africain qui fait donc la fierté de notre beau continent. Il va se présenter et ensemble, nous allons découvrir quelle est sa particularité. Bonsoir. Bonsoir. Comment vas-tu Oui, je vais bien et toi Alors, qui est ce jeune homme donc, qui est avec moi ici euh, devant toute notre audience d'Ivoire TV Ponette well, I'm, I'm the son of uh, Bettini Humengi. Um, you might know him as a model, actor, underwear designer, mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm Patrick Himengi. Okay. I'm actually his, only, his first son and only son. And uh, first of all, I want to get it, to thank you for this opportunity that you have given me, and uh, I'm very happy because this is actually my first interview okay. uh, you know, as being a, a young, athletic person. So thank you so much. Okay, good, good, good. Okay, Hannah was saying earlier, you are one of those uh, African children that make us very proud. So, we know that you are involved in a lot of sports, we're going to spread, you know, talk more about it, but how did you get into sport and why? Uh, I mean, I started playing um, football, I was about, uh, I was at 10, and um, it was just I used to just play sports just for fun, and then my, my father, uh, he actually took me into football. And uh, I never really liked it at, at the beginning because it was very brutal and very physical. And uh, I was never used to getting, you know, hit and taking the hits. And so the first time I went to actually to football, I took a lot of beating. I took a lot of because I played with guys older than me, and they hit me a lot. And I remember I went home. And then he, asked, my dad asked me that, oh, um, do you want to go back? Okay. And I said, yes, I want to go back. I mean, my reason for going back is because I feel like um, if I took them, all them hits, you know, I might as well just keep taking them and see how far he could take me. So that's how I got into the game. So it's basically through my father. Through your father. Yes. He pushed you. I mean, my father, I mean, my father, we don't see eye to eye, but um, I would say yes, he pushed me. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so beside, beside, because I heard, and I've been talking to your father several times, beside um, the uh, football, you were into other sport. I know that you've been running, so yeah. what you tell us about it. I mean, running is just something that, I mean, he pushed me to do running, too, because, okay. I mean, I He's just... He's very athletic, though. So I, I think that's one of the reasons. No, I, I don't think my father's athletic. I don't think he has the gift to be an athletic person as okay. I do. But as for running-wise, because my sister runs, and for me, I never really liked it. I mean, football was just one thing I wanted to do, but I never realized how fast and how strong that I really knew that I am. But I guess he saw that in me, so um, he pushed me to do it. So I tried it, and uh, it, it, turned out, it turned out pretty well. It's turned out turn great. I mean, okay. So, would you tell us about like all the the championship that you won, all the the medals and the <laughs> trophies that you were able to um, um, obtain? I mean, my first year running, I collected about 20 gold medals, wow. and uh, um, I won New York State MVP yeah, um, yeah. my first year running. And then uh, I took my um, after I, I went, I went from running to I went to a varsity, a more advanced running, which I was running with like guys that are older than me and seniors and stuff like that. And uh, they pushed me to run faster. And <clears throat> I won seven titles with um, my team. And, um, but individually wise, I won about, I would say I have about 80 something gold medals okay. in my house, so <laughs> yeah. Bravo, bravo, bravo. Et c'est l'une des raisons pourquoi on est très, très fiers de toi. Alors, tell us. How is it to be like an Africa, a young African man being in an American community? You have to fit in and you are uh, among the best. How is it to, to, to be in that environment? Is it hard? How, what's the relationship with your friends? So this is something we'd like to know about. I mean, um, it's not easy 
because first of all, you know, they look at you as a big threat. And you know, because when you, first of all, when you gifted and you fast and you very skill wise, they saw you as a big threat. And you know, with me, I have a lot of friends, but I'm not gonna say they people that I could call sometimes friends because, you know, in sports wise, it's very uh, hard to make a name for yourself, and everybody else is looking at you, and they're looking at you to to mess up or do something wrong. Like in my case, I've got hurt a couple of times, and you know, they're my friends. They would say, "Okay, I'm sorry this happened to you," but that just give them a chance to okay take my spot and and just get better and try to kick me out the picture. So. Um, I would say being in this kind of country, it's not easy to make it in sports. So you, you, you got to have the heart and the drive to do it. Okay. Easy to dream a dream, though it's harder to live. They gonna love me for my ambition. Easy to dream a dream, though it's harder to live. They gon' love me for my ambition. Easy to dream a dream, but what's harder to live? They gon' love me for my ambition. Do they what make you keep 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 going? Cause um you are meeting a lot of obstacles on your path, but what keeps you going? I gotta say, uh, I have a strong soul. I, I believe I believe in myself more than anything, more than anybody does in this in this life. But um, I have a family back home, and sometimes I feel like I have a whole country on my back. So um, when I'm running or when I'm playing football, my mind is just, you know, sometimes I think about other people because I I love to help people. I want to change the world in different in different ways. So. For me, I, I believe that what keeps me going is my belief in my soul. So. Wow, that's touchy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't expecting that, that uh, answer, actually. It's really touchy. So now, I saw you a couple of times with your father, because last time we were doing the casting, and I heard him saying, you were fired! <laughs> then today, you were again here posing as one of his models for his um, underline. So... What got into in between? Because I feel like there is a big competition between you and your father. Would you tell us about it? I mean, you know, my father always believed that he's better than me. You know, I mean, he's always gonna think. Is he? I don't think my father's better. Oh than me. no. I mean, I mean, because a great example is, um, I remember Father's Day. He said that he could have beat me in a race, and you know, and I guess I had to show my father that you can't beat me in a race. You know, so I actually embarrassed him on the track. So really, yeah. But now today, today it's just to come out here and just to support, because you know he support me a lot, and it's my way of like you know, okay, you helping me, I can help you in this kind of way too. So basically, we help each other. I mean, at the end of the day, it's a family thing. But at the end of the day, I'm still the better man than him. So. I believe so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, very great. So, um, back to your father. How is it to grow um, being the son of a top model, an artist, actor, and today a designer, someone with uh, a lot of activity, and knowing that you have been raised uh, basically he raised you by himself. So, mm -hmm. how what's your experience, and how was it to be in that place, specific situation? I mean, being that the kind of man he is, and uh, sometimes I mean, it's hard. I do believe that it's hard for him to uh, to do all this kind of work that he's doing. You, do your sister? I I forgot to mention that there's you and your sister. Right? Yeah, and, I mean, it's hard to raise two kids alone, and. and uh, Sometimes I don't know how he does it, but he, he still finds a way to do it. better than him, so. <laughs> I mean, I, I said I'm better than him in handling things, but when we speak from a father point of view, he's he's a he's a kind of man that he's he would do everything for his kids. Uh, I, I believe my point of view, I believe that my father would have been a, as bigger now, a bigger than he is now, if like you know if he has someone else helping to raise me and my sister because I believe that sometimes he stops his dreams to help me and my sister but to, like, to push ours and not to have ours. So I mean, I'm very proud of his son, but like I said, 
it was a competition. I'm, it's, ba it's basically who's gonna make it more bigger. So, and I believe I have more potential than he does. Speaks for itself. Beautiful music, paint a picture, it be my best. Defines ambition for me. My ambition to win, just to get me some ends. Help me pay my little rent. Maybe sit in the bins. I saw mama praying as she wait on results. It was hot in the kitchen. Can I wait on the porch? My father was missing. Oh Lord, all of north. Life was digging me deeper. I kept on coming up short. Breaking so many laws. Waking up in the dark. Who cut my power off? It's time to move that powder soft. Not too many options when you coming from the project. Tell me, what will be your biggest dream? My biggest dream? Um, my biggest dream is to play in the NFL. That's my biggest dream. And then my, my, I believe I will make it because I have the drive. But the first thing that I would do when I make it, I would, um, I like, I love kids. I like to help kids a lot. So that's, that, that would be my biggest dream to help kids out. Kids that don't have nothing. So I think that's the most important thing for me. Okay. So today, what's um, your, I would say, um, if we talk about the African continent, what do you have in plan for your motherland? I mean, like, um, when you see Africa, like, they only, they only, sh they don't see, they don't show the good part of Africa. It's just so kids in the streets that don't have nothing, and you know, and when the world sees it, they think about, okay, that's why sometimes African people get bad names. For me, I would like to expose it to show the good part about it, and so, you know, sometimes also, in order to show the good part, you need to show the bad side too. So, my, I mean, I, I don't mind. I, my dream is to build schools, um, give a kid every dream, give it, make sure a kid, if I have the dream, they can achieve it. So, I believe if I can make mine, they can do the same. So, in terms of African food, what's your favorite dish? Honestly, I didn't really grow up into African food because my my stepmom, you know, she was uh, she was white, so. Uh, I never, I didn't really grow up in that. I would grow so up you with. You don't eat ndole, uh, I would say. Chicken. Not really. Like that? Not really. I mean, I say my favorite African dish is probably, uh, I like fish. Okay, fried fish? Yeah, I like the one back home, not the one here, because the one back home is like, the, they got the, the right way to do it. Over here, it's, it's just, you should throw it in the oven, and that's about it. So, yeah. I said, I say, yeah, I like fish, that's about it. Are uh, uh, African children that make us really proud. So there is so many African children out there trying to reach the goal and find a way. So what will will be your advice to those young? I mean, those younger kids and those who haven't attained their goal yet. I believe that in life, when you love something so much, you gotta have a, the drive and the push of it, and that's something that every African kid has in them, but it's just that, you know, sometimes when we leave back home to come over here, you know, sometimes we get sidetracked and we forget what's the reason why we're here and we forget that we have family back home. Like, um, I mean, I have a lot of, I don't, I had a lot of African friends myself and, you know, some of them sidetracked and some of them decided to stay and do the right thing. And it's just, they, it's just what I can tell them is, you just gotta believe in yourself, and you just gotta. And, and sometimes you gotta look back at how it is back home, and you know it's not. Sometimes people go back there. They, I mean, you, you go to sleep without eating and stuff like that, you know. And you want to look at it like, say, how can I, what can I do to help my family out? And um, I mean, if I could do it, I believe that every African kid is basically linked together. So if I could do it, I think they could do the same thing. Alors, comme je l'avais dit tout à l'heure, nous étions avec l'un de ceux-là, donc jeunes africains de la diaspora qui font la différence et la fierté de leur pays. Eh bien, j'étais avec Patrick, Patrick Amey, donc le fils de Bertini, qui euh, donc parlait un peu de ce qu'il fait, de différentes euh, disciplines dans lesquelles il est des vainqueurs de plus de... De, de, enfin, gagnant de plus de 20, 20 médailles d'or et capitaine de son équipe de football américain, son rêve, eh bien, c'est d'être un joueur professionnel. C'était donc Estelle Yesso depuis Iwa TV.net. À la prochaine.
gon' love me for my ambition. 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 Ambition.